Saviors in the Tanakh and how the New Testament changed the role of what a Savior does. I'm going to show a few different Saviors and how they physically save people in their time of trouble. I have already done a lecture on this topic on Debate Talk for You. Shout out to Sal Showtime. Um, you could catch that at Debate Talk for You on YouTube. Um, probably on blog talk radio as well like i said shout out to sal um i also did a lecture concerning the false doctrine of the virgin birth um and a complete understanding of the virgin birth with another man named uh, amayan um we actually deal with it and the reason i'm bringing this up is because the new testament says in matthew chapter one that jesus came to save people from their sins well nowhere in the Tanakh does it talk about the saviors are going to save people from their sins so if you want to check that out go ahead it's, a, it's about a three-hour lecture this one is very very short um, and right to the point most people are reading the Bible backwards and ignoring the changing definitions of the New Testament we see in Matthew 1 21 that it says he shall save his people from their sins well since most people read the New Testament first and then go back to the Tanakh for references they think this is actually a quote or a concept from the Tanakh or specifically Isaiah 7 and 14 where it talks about um, somebody being called by a name we see in Matthew 1 21 it says thou shalt call his name Jesus but it doesn't say he shall save his people from their sins. It says they will call the baby Emmanuel, but nothing about saving people from their sins. So the reason I bring this up is for this reason. In the Strong's 4982, the word for save is sozo, to save, heal, preserve, rescue. The context it's supposed to be in is in Matthew 8, 25, where it says, then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. They were afraid of drowning or physically dying. This has nothing to do with saving them from their sins. Matthew 10 and 22, and you shall be hated of all men for my namesake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Well, this again has nothing to do with saving people from their sins, but being saved in the end means you're going to be saved in the salvation because we know the whole concept of the end is there's a final war to be saved from. Go and read Zechariah chapter 14. But the concept of a savior is completely different in the Tanakh than from the New Testament. So like I said earlier, read Isaiah 7, 1 through 25. Not one word about saving anyone from sins, like it says in Matthew 121, and he shall bring and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, not Emmanuel, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, what does this really mean? This means in the New Testament concept, he's going to save you from the punishment of your sins. Colossians 2 and 14, blotting out the handwritten ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us, he took it out of the way, nailing, nailing it to his cross. So basically, people say, well, Jesus nailed the punishment to the cross, so now he takes on your burden of sin, so you don't have to. Well, we know Israel was still destroyed. They still got punished for, punished for all the, the things that were written in the original covenant. So he didn't establish a new covenant, and he didn't save anyone from those sins. Luke 21 and 20, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. One of the reasons Jerusalem will be encompassed with armies is because Israel did something they wasn't supposed to do. According to the covenant given at Mount Sinai, Levit Leviticus 26 and 33 says, and I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. This is exactly what Luke 21 and 20 is describing that your land is going to be desolate and you're going to be chased with the sword because we know the Romans destroyed the city and the temple back in back in uh, 70 AD. 
So Jesus didn't save the, the people from their sins or from the Romans. So this concept doesn't even really make sense when you know how the Tanakh works. Like I said earlier, the false doctrine of the virgin birth and the complete understanding of the virgin birth is on debate talk for you. Shout out to Sal. Um, I did a, um, a dialogue with Amayan, the complete understanding of the virgin birth. So I actually give a Christian a chance to, you know, defend this, this topic. And the false doctrine of the virgin birth is just me basically taking it on by myself in the lesson. Was Israel destroyed because they rejected Jesus? Well, that's what you're going to hear the Christians say. Well, if you would have listened to Jesus, the temple wouldn't have been destroyed. That's a punishment for rejecting the Messiah, right? Well, let's read Mark 6 and 27. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded John's head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison. John believed in Jesus. John supposedly baptized Jesus. Yet John was not saved. John was beheaded. Acts 12, 1 through 2. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand, his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So we see John being executed before Jesus is executed and shed his blood to save people from their sins. And even afterwards, James is killed by Herod. First Thessalonians 1 and 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. It doesn't say from your sins, delivered us from the wrath to come. So if he saved you from your sins, then you wouldn't be expecting any type of punishment. So what is this wrath to come? We know the Romans came and destroyed the temple. And you can even apply this to future prophecies. But Jesus saved no one while alive or after he was executed. He even says those who endure to the end will be saved. So when was the end? Was the end in 70 AD to the preterists and some, some Christians? Yes, that was the end. Nobody got saved though. The end in our times hasn't come and still no one has been saved from their sins. People still die. People still get sick. Um, none of the curses of Adam and Eve have been list, lifted. Women still have a uh, problem, you know, giving birth, uh, pregnancy pains. Uh, we still see thorns and thistles growing up. So nothing has really changed. So what sins did he save you from? And this is a completely different concept. So I'm going to show you some real saviors from the Tanakh. Has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. So even in the New Testament, we see Luke talking about salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. So what's going on here? Luke gives a prophecy in Luke 1, 68 through 74. This is actually, actually John the Baptist's father. So he says, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. So he's saying he has visited and redeemed, but they weren't redeemed. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us. Us would be Israel in the house of his servant David. This would be referring to Jesus. And he spoke by the mouth of his holy spirits. Oh, I'm sorry, of his holy prophets who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, not from their sins, from our enemies, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, our father, I'm sorry, the oath which he swore to our father, Abraham, to grant us that we being delivered, or that word is actually saved, from the hand of our enemies, from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Now we know the Jews that followed Jesus did not serve God without fear. They was running around. They were being harassed by the Romans. We see Herod was killing people from the church. We see um, in the book of Acts, they're kicked out of Rome. Like they were not able to serve without fear. Paul was going around killing them for a time. So it says, save from our enemies. Nothing about being saved from their sins. So Matthew 1 just kind of, kind of just pulls that out of the air. So 
like I said earlier, I'm going to show you some real saviors. And even in Luke, it's describing that Jesus is supposed to save people from their enemies, which has been turned into demons and devils. But right here, it says from the hand of all who hate us. And we know even Jesus says you will be hated by all nations on account of me. It don't say you'll be hated by all demons and devils on account of me. So he says, love your enemies, right? Feed your enemies and stuff like this. Are you talking about loving the demons and the devils and feeding them? No, we're talking about people here. That's a whole nother concept that got changed, but that's not the topic of this lesson. The New Testament has changed the definition of a savior. Genesis 6, 8 through 9. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man or a righteous man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Now, we know that Noah was saved from a flood. So Noah got salvation. Now, the people who were saved with Noah, right? Were they sinners? It doesn't say, right? But what happened? They still got saved. Why? Noah built the ark, right? Genesis 6, 18. But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. There is no indication that Noah's family was righteous, but they were saved because Noah was righteous. Noah did not have to die or shed any blood. Nobody prayed in Noah's name. This is the first person saved from, saved from any type of disaster, and it has nothing to do with being saved from sins. Okay, doesn't tell us Noah was a Noah was a sinner, and then he turned his life around and got saved. Now you can imply that because it says he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Was he a sinner before? It really doesn't matter because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. We know it says grace is given to the humble. So whatever the case is, Noah could have humbled himself and found that grace. But it also said he was a just and a perfect man in his generations. But the point is, he saved his whole family. They didn't think Noah was the Messiah. They didn't pray in his name. There was no blood. But salvation was still there. Moses the Savior, Exodus 2 and 17. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. So we see Moses saved somebody, right? This was completely physical, right? Now, what word is there? In the Strong's, it was translated in some places, not all translations do this, but some translation, translations say, and he helped them, which is true. He did help them, but the word there is Wayo wo sion, which has the root of Yasha, 3467 in the Strongs. Avenging, defend, deliverer, help, preserve, rescue, be safe. To open wide or free by implication to be safe. Causatively to free or secure at all. Avenging, defend, deliverer, help, preserve, rescue, be saved, bring, having salvation, save your, get victory. So Moses saved them from their flock, right? What kind of savior was Moses? We see nothing about the beliefs or spirituality, spirituality of the women Moses saved, and it was completely physical. Not a word about sin or Messiah or believing or blood. Why is that? Because the word savior has nothing to do with saving people from their sins. It's saving people in a time of trouble. In the time of your trouble, this is exactly the concept I was referring to when it says, I will save you in the time of your trouble. This is what the salvation means. And this is where the saviors come into play. Nehemiah 9 and 27. Therefore, you were delivered, you delivered them into the hand of their enemies who oppressed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried to you, you heard from heaven, and according to your abundant mercies, you gave them deliverers who saved them from the hand of their enemies. Not from their sins, not from demons and devils, not from the punishment of their sins, but from the hand of their enemies. Jeremiah 2 and 28. But 
Where are your gods that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise. If they can save you in the time of your trouble, not from your sins, for according to the number of your seeds are your gods, O Judah. So we know Judah was turned into idolatry, but the Most High says, well, if that's your God, see if they can save you in the time of your trouble. Like when people come and invade, like when the Babylonians came, like when the Romans came, like when the Assyrians came, let them save you from the in the time of your trouble. Jeremiah 30 and 7, alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Not a word about saving people from their sins. In the time of trouble, Psalm 37, 39, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Psalm 41 and 1. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. Now, how do you get that salvation? Is when you consider the poor. It's called charity. Read Daniel 4 and 27. Isaiah 33 and 2. O Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. Daniel 12 and 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up. Not Jesus. Michael, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered or saved. Everyone who is found written in the book. How do you get written in the book? Read Malachi 3, uh, 16 through 18. And it says, those who fear the Lord were written down in a book. Those who feared the Lord and thought upon his name. Feared the Lord and thought upon his name. In the time of trouble, that's how you get in the book. So now let's go through some examples of when the Lord raised up saviors or deliverers. And what were the, what were the people saved from? Their sins or from actual people? Judges 3, 9 through 11. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them. Or, in other words, saviors that saved them from their enemies, not from demons and devils and sins, right? You can repent of your sins. Read Ezekiel 18, the entire chapter. So, it says, Even Othniel, the son of Canaz, Caleb's younger brother, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war, and the Lord delivered Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. And, in the la in the, in, and the land had rest 40 years, and Othniel, the son of Canaz, died. So we see this savior, Othniel, had the spirit of the Lord upon him. He was a judge, and he was a warrior, and he was a savior from physical people. Not a word about saving the people from their sins. So Judges 3 and 9, he saved them from what, right? Israel to deliver them, right? He sent deliverers of Israel to deliver them. Othniel, right? Psalm 106 and 8, it says, nevertheless, he saved them, right? What did he save them from? He saved them from the hand of him that hated them. And redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Not their sins. Not demons and devils. From people who hated them. He saved them. This was physical. Deliver you out of the hand of your enemies. 1 Samuel 12 and 11. And the Lord sent Jerub Baal and Badan and Jephthah and Samuel and deliver you out of the hand of your enemies on every side and ye dwell safe. This was physical. This was from people. They didn't fight demons and devils. Luke 171, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Luke 174, to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. 
So Luke says nothing about being saved from sins. And Luke also has a virgin birth narrative, right? Nothing about being saved from sins. And also this shows you why the disciples in the book of Acts asked him, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel and get it back from the enemies who hate us, which was the Romans? They was looking for a physical savior. And people try to say, oh, the disciples, they just didn't know. They didn't understand the parables. No, they knew the Tanakh sent physical saviors. That's what the Tanakh speaks about. This whole concept of being saved from sins is new doctrine. So we have a Messiah, son of God, a firstborn from the tribe of Judah. He was a king, a prophet, and a savior. Psalm 89 and 20. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David, my servant, with holy oil. I have anointed him. There's his Messiahship. Psalm 89, 26 to 27. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. There goes him showing being a son if he's calling the most high his father. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. There goes the concept of being the firstborn. Psalm 89, 29, I will establish his offspring forever and his throne as the days of the heavens. There goes his king, his kingship. 2 Samuel 5 and 3. So all the elders of Israel came out to the king at Hebron and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel. This is a real savior, a prophet and a king from Judah, a messiah. This was the blueprint of salvation to Israel. So more of the New Testament has changed the definition of a savior. So now let's look at a key figure and how he got down. First Samuel 23 and two. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, go and attack the Philistines and save Keilah. First Samuel 23 and five. And David and his men went to Keilah and fought with Philistines, not demons and devils, and brought away their livestock and struck them with a great blow. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. Physical salvation without anyone having to die for anyone, and nobody had to pray in David's name to be saved. David is the model Messiah, by the way. So David didn't require all the things in the New Testament. He asked God, should I go and fight? Mosiah said, go fight, and he saved the people. That's what should happen in the New Testament if they had a savior on the scene. They would deliver only themselves. Can you save yourself? Ezekiel 14 and 14, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. Well, that's funny because Galatians 2.21 says, if righteousness came to the law, then Jesus died in vain. So how can these three men save themselves by their righteousness? Look in the Strong's 53.37. That's the word deliver. We see the same word in Exodus 3 and 8. So I have come down to deliver them. This is talking about the Exodus. Exodus 18 and 8. How the Lord delivered them or saved them. How did these people get saved? Physically. Noah was physically saved from a flood. Daniel was physically saved from the lion's den, right? This is physical salvation. Daniel, the savior. Most people don't know Daniel was a savior. Doesn't call him a savior, right? But what happened? Daniel 2, 12 through 13. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that all the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. What happened? King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Nobody could interpret it. So he said, you know what? All these fake wise people, all y'all got to die. I'm killing everybody. But Daniel steps up. What happens? Daniel 2, 17 through 20. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? His companions, that they would desire mercies from the God of heaven, 
concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for his wisdom and might are his. What happened? Daniel ended up giving the uh, interpretation of the dream to the king. He explained everything, was put in a higher position, and none of the wise men of Babylon were killed. Daniel was able to save everybody because he went to the Most High, him, and his three companions and they prayed the most high revealed the secret which would make daniel a savior because he physically saved people that were going to be slain by the king of babylon not a word about saving people from their sins we know babylon was a wicked kingdom now it doesn't say this but we know chances are the wise men of nebuchadnezzar probably wouldn't know torah scholars right <laughs> so i'm not saying that they were wicked but it doesn't say anything about they were saved from their sins right so daniel was a savior in his own right wisdom saves we know daniel was very wise right that's what he did he used his wisdom he went and prayed to the most high went and got his three boys and was like yo we gotta pray we go we gotta figure this out and the most high helped them now we have scripture to back this up. Proverbs 16, 14, the wrath of a king is a messenger of death, but a wise man will pacify it. That's exactly what Daniel did. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12, for wisdom is a defense, even as money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserveth the life of him that have it. Wisdom saves. Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And we know fear is wisdom. Read Job 28 and 28. Wisdom saves. She is a tree of life. Proverbs 3.18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her well who is her i'm going to even go to the new testament on this one matthew 11 and 19 the son of man came eating and drinking they say behold a gluttonous man and a wine bibber a friend of publicans and sinners but wisdom is justified by her children so even the new testament tells you wisdom is personified by her so this is not referring to Jesus, all those who try to say, oh, you know, this is talking about Jesus. He's the new tree of life. He's the way, the life, and the truth. No, the Tanakh says it's wisdom. Read Proverbs chapter 8. Read all of Proverbs chapter 3. When, read Proverbs period, and it tells you over and over, wisdom, she is crying out to men. She has length of days and riches. She is a tree of life. That's what Daniel used to save all those people of Babylon, his wisdom. And the Most High heard his plea. Wisdom saves. 2 Samuel 20 and 22. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. So what's going on? The guy was running from Joab. He ran into the city. And Joab came and said, look, um, we, we, want the, we want the person that ran up in there. And the woman said, hold on. I'll be back. In her wisdom, she found a dude, threw his head over the wall. And that let no Joab, that man's not a threat to you no more, right? She saved her whole city from being invaded by David's army from jo and Joab. Um, where is uh, the calling upon David's name and being baptized? No, that's not what salvation was about back then in the Tanakh, should I say. Ecclesiastes 7 and 19. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than 10 mighty men who are in the city. 
Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten men who are in the city, right? Ecclesiastes 9 and 15. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered or saved the city, yet no one remembered that same poor man. Nobody had to die, right? So what about if you say, well, the man got his head cut off. He died, but he didn't die for nobody's sins. He died for his sin, right? And he had obviously was wicked. That's why he's being chased by Joab in the first place. So if you want to use that concept, then go for it. But wisdom saves. We see the whole concept of salvation in the Tanakh in the New Testament completely different. I did a whole lesson on savings in the Tanakh. Shout out to Sal Shotan. Um, check me out on um, my website. Devon Mays, Devon Jerome Mays, Weebly.com. Check out my YouTube page. If you're learning things, go ahead, subscribe, hit the button, hit the bell so you know when my new lessons come out. Um, like I said, I got a, it's about a three hour lecture on savings in the Tanakh with Devon Mays on Debate Talk for You. Shout out to Sal, where I go into more depth about this and, you know, um, we even get to hear somebody call in and basically prove my point that the concept of Jesus is completely different than what's taught in the Tanakh. And this is exactly why nobody was saved in the New Testament and Jesus hasn't saved anyone to this day because out of his own mouth, nobody's going to be saved to the end anyway, but not by the way he described it. Because <laughs> nowhere in the Tanakh does it tell you that the Messiah is going to save you from any sins. It tells you to repent and turn back to the most the most high. Read Ezekiel 37, 1 through 28. Read Proverbs. I mean, go back and listen to this lecture and see what a savior is and what a savior does. These concepts are have been basically completely changed to fit a new narrative or a new doctrine. So even John the Baptist was baptizing people for the remission of sins, but there's no blood involved. There was no belief in the Messiah involved in that. He just said, come get baptized for the remission of sins. Matter of fact, I just did a whole lesson about his blood, the only way to atone for sins. Check that out on my YouTube page. Go ahead and subscribe. Till next time.